Welcome back to the Cozy Rosie Crochet channel and today I'm talking to you about the gay swatch for the rose cardigan crochet along. I know that many people won't want to do this step but it really will help you achieve the right finish size for your project and help you calculate the amount of yarn you need to make your project. So the amount of yarn is going to change depending on which size you're making, which sleeve type you're making, what length you are making of your cardigan. So the first thing we need to do is establish the gauge for the pattern. And all that means is that we're aiming to achieve the same number of stitches within a four inch square or a 10 centimeter square that I did when I made or designed the pattern. There are lots of different ways that you can measure your gauge, including using something called a knitter's ruler, where you just measure within that 10 centimeter square, or you can pin your tension swatch or your gauge swatch down and use either a steel ruler or a sturdy measuring tape. One of the other really good reasons to do a tension swatch is to familiarise yourself with the stitches that are going to be used in the pattern that you're making. As we become familiar with our stitches, our tension can actually loosen as we relax into making those stitches. So this will give you a chance to practice the stitches that are going to be used, become familiar with them and also enable you to kind of crochet a bit quicker as you move through the pattern. So the rose cardigan is made using an Aran or worsted weight yarn. You can use any fibre blend that you want to. I'm going to be using, for my next version, I'm going to be using the paint box yarns Simply Aran. Now I've already made two of these cardigans and I am going to be making a third alongside with you. And for my third version, I'm going to be using the paint box yarns Simply Aran. Possibly not in this colour, I haven't decided yet. But I have already worked up this cardigan using a DK weight yarn or a size 3 yarn. And I've also used a bulky weight yarn, which is 100% merino. That yarn wasn't a true chunky weight in my opinion. So that was why the Aran weight was what the pattern was designed in. So grab your yarn and we can start with a five millimeter crochet hook. I have a selection of sizes here because if we don't achieve gauge with a standard five millimeter hook, we can change our tension or our stitch counts within that four inch, within that four inch square using a different hook size. If you don't have all of these sizes to hand, you might not even need them, but I have a four, four and a half, the five, which I know I'm going to achieve gauge with, and just in case, I have a five and a half as well. If you are using a different weight yarn, I would recommend starting with a five millimeter crochet hook with a DK weight yarn to see if you can achieve the same number of stitches and rows within that four inch square. If you're using a chunky weight yarn, you're gonna to have to be a little bit careful because if you come down in your hook size, your fabric is gonna become a little bit stiff. We're going to discuss the impact of not achieving gauge once we've made our gauge swatches so that you can understand if you have too many stitches, too many rows, what impact that will have on your pattern. So gather your yarn and your crochet hook and let's make our swatch. So we're going to start by making a slip knot and placing that onto our hook. Now I achieved gauge using my five millimetre hook. So I'm going to start with that hook size for this gauge swatch. We're going to start by making a chain of 25. So, so we yarn over the hook towards us, bring it through the loop on our hook and repeat that for 25 times. So that's two, three and 25. Now straight away you can see that this is longer than four inches and that's only a good thing. I've seen many a time people making a gauge swatch that is almost exactly four inches wide and long and that, that is not a true way of being able to check your gauge. Your gauge square should sit within the sample of crochet fabric that you've made. So for instance, it should be that wide and that wide. So probably about five by five inches or six by six inches, kind of 15 centimeters wide as a bare minimum. Now we're going to be working the stitches that are used within our pattern to check our gauge. So we're gonna start by working into our second chain from hook. This loop on our hook doesn't count. There's our first chain and we're going to start by yarning over and inserting our hook under the top loop of our first chain. We're going to yarn over and bring a loop up, but we're not working the half double crochet. We're actually making an extended half double crochet. So it's slightly taller than a standard half double crochet. To do that, we yarn over and we're just going to pull through just that first loop on our hook. That means that we still have three loops on our hook. 
we yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that's the extended half double crochet. We're then going to work one extended half double crochet into each chain across. So we ignore that big hole, we yarn over, insert our hook into the next chain, just under that top loop, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over just to pull through that first loop on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. We're going to repeat this all the way down, yarning over, inserting our hook into the next chain, bring our loop up, yarn over to pull through the first loop and then yarn over to pull through all three loops. So continue to repeat the extended half double crochet. That is the same as the extended half treble crochet in UK terms. And I will meet you at the end of row one. I'm being as open and honest as I can be. You can see that my crochet is curling here. It is nothing to do with my tension. It's just the way the stitch lies. A light stretch and it lays flat. So at the end of row one, you should have 24 extended half double crochets. So do count your stitches at the end of your first row. You do have to remember that your first stitch will be a little bit further down because it's just on top of that skipped chain. If you need to mark that first stitch so you can make sure that you pick it up on the way back, you can mark that very first stitch down the side with your stitch marker, just to remind you that that's your first stitch when you come back. You should have a stitch count of 24 extended half double crochets ready to go on to row two. So for row two to six, we're gonna be making a chain of one. We're gonna turn our work and work into the same stitch as our chain one. So this is the stitch, that's our chain one. So we're going to yarn over and insert our hook underneath both loops of our stitch. We're gonna yarn over, bring our loop up. Yarn over, just pull through that first loop before we yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook. We're then going to work one extended half double crochet into each stitch across. Pull through that first loop only before pulling through all three loops. And we're just going to repeat this all the way across, working one extended half double crochet into each stitch. And we're repeating this so until we have a total of six rows. And your stitch count is going to remain the same. You should still have 24 extended half double crochets at the end of each row. So we're creating a square and not a triangle. Remember, if you need to, you can mark that first stitch if you find that you're dropping stitches. When you get to the end of your row, you should have a stitch count of 24. You're going to turn your work, make a chain of one, ready to continue to work in the same and each stitch across, working one extended half double crochet, and I'll meet you at the end of row six. So at the end of row six, you should be able to easily count your rows now, but I just wanted to check in that you still have a stitch count of 24 extended half double crochets. So to count your rows, you can see that there is a gentle ribbing effect happening with these extended half double crochets. I absolutely love this look, especially as the pattern grows. It really does look nice. So you can see here we've got row one, two, three, four, five and six. Now we're going to continue to repeat this row until we have a longer length of fabric. We should have a width roughly of seven inches. And we need to get probably about the same length of seven inches to help us measure within our gauge square. The reason we're making this longer is so that we can check the number of rows we get within our 10 centimeters as well. So I'm going to continue to repeat this, working our chain one and turning and working our extended half double crochet into the same stitch and each stitch across so that we can get a better measurement with our gauge at the end of those 12 rows. So continue to repeat until you have a total of 12 rows and then we're gonna measure our swatches and check we have the right number of stitches and the right number of rows. I will see you shortly once you've worked your 12 rows. So once you have your 12 rows made, we should be ready to measure our gauge. And what we're aiming for is eight rows 
of extended half double crochet within 10 centimeters. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, few for me, and 12 stitches within 10 centimeters or four inches. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So if you are using a tape measure, some accuracy is needed. And the best way of doing this is place it on some cardboard or something, but just mark the beginning of a stitch. You can't see that against this light. Let me try these white pins instead. So that's the start of a stitch there. Then once that pin's in place, you can measure across your four inches. So, oh, so I know that's in the right place because it's on top of the pin. There's the four inches, so I don't have to really keep that there. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. We can do the same for the rows. If we kind of mark the beginning of a row, we can turn it, I'm going to reverse that this time. So that's row one, two, three. Oh. So row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So let's talk about some of the ways that not achieving that stitch count and the row count will impact the pattern and how we can make some adjustments. Now, if you found that you have 14 or 18 stitches within that four inch measurement, how is that going to impact the sizing? Because the row count will impact on the length of the project that you make. And actually, that's probably the easiest one to adjust. Just if you want to make it longer, you simply make more of the pattern repeat. However, with the stitch count, what you don't want to do is to work up the first part of the pattern and find the whole thing is the wrong size. So let's focus on the stitch count first of all and how we can adjust to get the right number of stitches. The easiest thing you can do if you have too many stitches means that your stitches are too small. So what you would do, I've moved my hooks away so I don't get confused. You can try a larger hook. So this is a five and a half millimeter or you could try a six millimeter hook so that your stitches will be bigger by making, making your swatch with a bigger hook. So if it was me and my stitch count wasn't correct, I would unravel what I've made or cut it off if I have spare yarn so I can compare them and I would remake my swatch with a larger hook to get my stitches bigger because if I've got too many stitches they're too small. The same with your row count if you have too many rows within that four inch square you need to make your rows taller so your again your stitches need to be bigger but this is why the main focus is getting the width of your stitch count correct because we're working, the impact of your stitch size will be on the width of your finished panel. If you have too few stitches, you can of course go down to a smaller hook size. Now I wouldn't jump all the way down to a four millimeter. I would probably try a four and a half millimeter hook before going down again to a four millimeter. If you have too few stitches, so if you have 10 or eight stitches, your stitches are simply too big to fit that many within the width, within that four inch square. The risk of making too many stitches is that your project will come out too big. And obviously that's not necessarily a bad thing. You could get an oversized cardigan, that's quite cute. In fact, my next version that I'm making, I'm going up one or two sizes um, so that I can make an oversized version. Now this pattern is customizable in the fact that I'm going to be giving you all the measurements of all the elements of the pattern. So if you do have too many stitches at this point, I am going to be talking you through how to adjust your starting chain and make sure that you've got the right panel size for each section. But if you really do want to achieve gauge as closely as possible, try a different hook size and remake your swatch. Now, I have achieved gauge, unsurprisingly, it is my pattern. <laughs> I was written on my gauge with this hook in exactly just a different yarn weight I used on the last version. So another way you can change the size of your stitches is to change the yarn weight. So for instance, as I've said, I've used an Aran weight yarn to test my swatch. I've got stitches, I've got pins everywhere, let me move those. 
if you have way too many stitches, so you've got 15, 20 stitches inside there, your yarn is too small and you could try working either two strands of DK, try a chunky weight yarn that you have in your um, have to hand to achieve the same gauge as well. As I've mentioned, if you are quite happy that your stitches are nice and even, the tension is the same in every stitch and row, sometimes we just have to adjust the pattern. And as I said, this pattern is easily customizable, so we can make those adjustments as we go through. If you are planning on that, it's going to make calculating the amount of yarn that you're going to use a little bit more challenging, but we can still work it out to a rough example. Do let me know in the comments if you've achieved gauge or if you have any queries about how you need to adjust your tension or your yarn weight and I will answer those as quickly as possible for you so that we can get you comfortable knowing that you're going to achieve the right size of your pattern. I hope you've enjoyed making the extended half double crochets. It can be a bit tricky when that hook goes through too many loops but it's a beautiful texture that it creates if you look from the side and that very gentle ribbing. I really think it's cute. Now that you have your gauge for your pattern, you've decided which yarn you're going to be using and which hook, write it down somewhere. Make a note of it. If you have purchased the printable pattern, you will find there's a section in there to write in the hook that you're using and the weight of yarn that you're using as well. In our next video, we're going to be using our gauge to calculate how much yarn that we need based on the pattern options that we're choosing. All of this can be adjusted throughout this pattern. This is a fun project that we're going to be doing together and you can use scrap yarn, you can use yarn from your stash. As long as you're achieving gauge with that same yarn weight, you can make it in whatever you want, you really can. So I will see you in the next video where we're going to be discussing um, our schematic, how that pattern is made up and how our gauge can help us calculate the amount of yarn that we need. So I will see you in the next video.